Hey, my name is James Nicholson and welcome to my YouTube channel. House prices are expected to surge after the general election. There's a number of reasons for this. There's lots of analysts all agreeing and it is common after elections that you get pent up demand. You see lots of people right now are just not buying. They're not moving. They're not selling. The market has a wait and see approach. They want to see who's going to get in. Is it reform? Is it conservatives? Is it going to be Labour, most likely. And so that often slows down the market. They want to see what new policies are going to come out and what could impact them. Would it drive house prices down? But also, it's likely that it will drive them up. So I'm going to talk about what is going on in this video and much more besides that. So if you're new around here and you haven't done it already, do subscribe to the channel over there and hit the bell notification. We've got new content every single day on the property market. What's going on? We talk property investing. We talk property news and much more besides. So do subscribe. And while you're here, smash like, tickle like, do something to that like button. That really helps us with the YouTube algorithm algorithm can't even say it um we everyone that does that it just gets more views on the channel and that's what we're trying to do to grow so thanks for that so lots of people are talking about the market it's slow at the moment the market is definitely slow and this should be a busy time of year leading into spring and summer are decent times of year normally for house buying because it's just a nice time of year to move isn't it and right now the market isn't doing much house prices are flat maybe up a little on an annual basis house prices are up one and a half percent some places had house prices up 0.1 percent last month some had them down 0.1 percent so it's not doing much at all but new inquiries to estate agents are down from buyers. New listings are also not happening too much at the moment as well. And everyone is just waiting for that 4th of July election just to see what happens. Now, I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion, not to be political about it, but it looks highly likely that Labour are absolutely going to crush the Tories in the election. Yes, Reform Party's coming back and they're beating the Tories as well. But it doesn't look like they've got enough momentum to actually get that uh, prime minister's job. So what are Labour saying? And that's what we've got to look at here, because their manifesto, their pledges are going to impact the property market. So one thing that a lot of people are waiting on is first and foremost, the election. So once that's done, Labour likely will be in power. Labour are saying that they're going to go on a building spree. We've heard that before. A lot of people have said that. Every government has said that they'd build 300,000 houses. Labour's going a bit bigger than that. They're saying that they, over the next few years, are going to build 1.5 million properties or at least help support contractors and councils and housing providers to do that. So that won't push prices up. In fact, it's more likely that it would correct the market if you suddenly had a load of properties in there. But is this going to happen? Probably not. Every single government has promised this for decades. It just doesn't happen. The problem you've got is housing builders don't have much incentive at the moment. Materials are at record highs. Interest rates are also high. They would borrow money to do the project. But also their customers need to borrow money and they can't borrow as much as they could a year ago. So that means that what's going to happen is people are also going to wait for rates to come down. So interest rates is going to be the big determination to this potential surge after the election. That's going to be a key thing here. Now, interest rates we know are likely to go down this year. It was expected they'd go two, three, four times down. Now, probably just once, maybe in August we're expecting the Bank of England to first drop rates. Not much, but a quarter of a percent is what I expect. Now, these 1.5 million houses are out of this equation because they're not going to get built in six months. You're not going to get labour in and then suddenly there's a million houses built. It just doesn't work like that. You've got planning and all this stuff uh, and the market needs to be right and it's just not going to happen. But what is going to happen is interest rates are likely to drop at some point this year. 
what will then happen is all the people that have been sitting on the sidelines, a lot of them are just waiting for something to happen. They want to feel like the market has bottomed out. Now, interest rates dropping means that potentially people can afford a little bit more and house prices might not go up crazy, but they could start going up again. That means those people on the sidelines will now look at jumping in and getting a property because they feel at that point that they bought at the bottom of the market. And this is what normally would happen is people are waiting for a sign that this is the end, this is the bottom and interest rates finally being cut is probably going to trigger some people to do it. Now, housing transactions were down in 2023. They're down in 2024 as well compared to normal times. And there are lots of people that could afford to buy a property. They might be sitting on a lot of cash. They might be able to buy with a mortgage, even with the higher interest rates. But they just need some incentive, some indication that now is the time to go forward. And so what's going to do that for them is new election, done, complete, and interest rates dropping as well. Um, also, Labour have a scheme that they're going to continue. So we've got the low deposit schemes out there at the moment where people can buy a, more, uh, buy a property, first time buyers with as little as a 5% deposit. There was one where you could do just a 1% deposit uh, at one time and you get the incentives that the, the, the builders have uh, to reduce those deposits for you in that way. Those sticking will keep the market moving as well. And potentially, if we increase the stamp duty threshold for first-time buyers, which that was talked about, maybe Labour will do something similar. That could get the market moving again as well. So all of this indicates, I think, and I believe this as well, I think that once you've got that election out of the way, lots of people will suddenly come into the market at the same time. Once the rates stop dropping, more people will come into the market at the same time. We talked about mortgage arrears yesterday. While they're increasing, they're not anywhere near the 2008 level. So we've got 1.2% people in mortgage arrears at the moment. It was 3.4% in the crash of 2008. So it doesn't mean we're going to suddenly get flooded with sellers into the market. And that means the market will be stable and with these extra buyers temporarily for a three, four, five month period, I feel house prices will go up a little bit. Uh, and that will mean that after the election, things could move forward. What it doesn't necessarily mean is house prices won't crash. It just means it will be later than you might think. That might come in 2025 or 2026. Let me know what do you think of all of this. Do you believe that the election is just going to be when people start getting back into the property market? Do comment below. Do you think people are waiting for interest rates to drop as well? Do smash a like, do comment below, do subscribe to the channel and check out all the other content on my channel, including this video right here.